Hello, in this video we're going to discuss the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, just by that name it sounds like it should be important, uh, and it is. Um, the fundamental theorem of calculus is the um, theorem that links the concept of a derivative with the concept of an integral. Um, without this theorem, they, those two concepts are completely different topics. Uh, the derivative talks about the instantaneous rate of change. The integral talks about how much change happened. And this links those two concepts together. Um, so I've written down uh, a, a fact here. Um, it says, consider F big uh, capital F of X to be the antiderivative of little f of X. If you integrate little f of X from A to B, that is equal to the antiderivative at B minus the antiderivative at A. Done. That's all there is to it. Um, the, fundamental, the fundamental theorem uh, just shows that you can express the outcome of an integral with the antiderivative. Um, so for starters here, um, if you have the integral of cosine um, from 0 to pi over 3, the antiderivative of cosine is sine. Cosine is a known derivative of sine, so its antiderivative is sine. You draw a line and go 0 to pi over 3, and you end up with sine pi over 3 minus sine of 0, and you can evaluate that. Uh, sine of pi over 3, uh, that's like 60 degrees, root 3 over 2, minus 0, there you go. So in that case, we were able to uh, come up with an exact answer of square root of 3 over 2. Uh, another antiderivative, uh, and uh, it could be, you could just say, you know, a to b and have 1 over 1 plus x squared. Uh, so in order to find the antiderivative, you have to sometimes just know it. Um, 1 over 1 plus x squared is a known derivative of arctan. So this is arctan uh, of x from a to b. And that could just be written as arctan of b minus arctan of a. And if you had numbers, then, you know, they end up great. Um, uh, so let's, uh, let's kind of take this a, a step farther. Suppose you have y equals the integral of um, cosine x, and we'll do uh, a to b. Um, if you wanted to take the derivative of this, uh, the, 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 uh, the antiderivative of cosine is sine, as we saw, and it would be sine of b minus sine of a. And since this right here is currently a number. The derivative <coughs> of a number is zero. Um, so consider limits of integration that are not numbers but variables. Uh, let's say y equals cosine x <coughs> from 5 to x. That integral will be the antiderivative of cosine, which is sine, minus uh, sine of 5. If you decided to take the derivative of y, or the derivative of this integral, now, in theory, the, what's a derivative of an antiderivative? They, they should kind of cancel out. But we need to kind of deal with the mechanics of how that actually happens. The derivative of sine would be cosine. And please treat this as a chain rule. Cosine is the outside derivative. X is the inside. And then multiply with the derivative of X, which is 1. And then minus sine of 5 is a number. If you didn't know that, you could, take, you could do a chain rule. The derivative of sine is cosine. Recopy the inside is 5. Multiply with the derivative of 5, which is 0. And you get Y prime does equal cosine times 1 just cosine. So in this specific case, 
uh, the antiderivative uh, was sine, and when I took the derivative, it took me back to cosine. So when I went from uh, from an integral and I took the derivative of the integral, the the integral basically canceled out with the derivative, and we got cosine. So that's uh, uh, affirming of this fundamental theorem of calculus, um, but there's more to it. So let's look at another example when we have uh, an x, uh, something that's not just an x, something that's a maybe an x squared or a 5x or uh, something that's a little bit more complex. We'll stick with cosine here. Uh, suppose you have, uh, you integrate from 2x um, to 3x squared. Uh, again, the antiderivative of cosine is sine, and you would be plugging in sine of 3x squared and then sine of 2x. So that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, y prime, which in turn be two chain rules. The derivative of sine is cosine. Uh, recopy the inside, which is 3x squared. And then multiply by the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x. And then uh, the derivative of sine is cosine. Recopy the inside from the chain rule. Then multiply by the derivative of 2x, which is 2. And so you could rewrite this and say y prime is 6x times cosine 3x squared minus 2 times cosine 2x. So that is the derivative of this integral. Now notice uh, the base function is the same. The derivative and the integral somewhat canceled out. We, and we, we remained with cosine, but it certainly looked different than what we started with. So when you apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, if you have limits of integration that are not just uh, you know, a single x and a number, uh, you're not going to end up with exactly that. Um, the only time that you end up with cosine is when this is a number and that is an x and you're done. <coughs> um, so I, uh, I use cosine, which is a pretty well-known, has a pretty well-known antiderivative. Some of these things you may not have a nice uh, well-known antiderivative for. Uh, you can still uh, apply the fundamental theorem um, and find the derivative of the integral. Notice that the pattern you see is I put in the top limit of integration, uh, multiply by its derivative, subtract the bottom limit of integration put in, multiply by its derivative. Uh, so let's do, uh, do uh, e to the x secant of x. No, I don't need that there. And we'll do this from 2 uh, to x, first of all. Um, so, like I said, if you just have a number and you just have an x, uh, the derivative of this integral is going to be e to the x times secant of x, and uh, it would be basically times 1 and then minus e to the 2 times secant of 2 times 0. I'll just write that out. And then minus e to the 2 secant of 2 times 0. And y prime is simply e to the x times secant of x. So when you have just a number and an x, uh, you end up with exactly the same thing. Um, if it's otherwise, though, you have to make some adjustments. So... Um, you have y equals e to the x and secant of x, and you go from, um, say, 5x squared uh, to 4x cubed plus x. So you have some really goofy-looking limits of integration. Uh, all you do is, uh, you know, I don't know the antiderivative of that. I, I don't. But I know that the derivative of the antiderivative will get us pretty darn close back to e to the x times secant of x. So in a case like this, I just follow the pattern. I take the top limit, in, limit of integration and I say, okay, this is e to the 4x cubed plus x times secant of 4x cubed plus x 
times the derivative of 4x cubed plus x, 12x squared plus 1. And then I subtract uh, e to the 5x squared times secant of 5x squared times the derivative of 5x squared, which is 10x. So that's the derivative of this integral. Put in the top limit, limit of integration first, here and here, multiply by its derivative, minus, put in the bottom limit of integration, and then multiply by its derivative. This will work for any, uh, any integral of any weird function that you want to take the derivative of. Um, so if you want to take the derivative of an integral, um, you apply the, the fundamental theorem here and just follow this pattern. Uh, maybe just uh, one more example here. Um, we could just do y equals the integral of uh, 1 plus sine squared u and 1 plus cosine squared of u and du, uh, and then we'll just do like uh, uh, pi to pi minus x. One other comment, notice how I've been using x here and x here. It's pretty common to use different variables. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that, I mean, it doesn't matter, but it's probably customary to write this where we have a different variable in the integral uh, as regards to the, uh, the limits of integration. That's only so you can see the change. It's only can, so you can see the variable change. Uh, I don't know the antiderivative of this. I don't need to. We're going to plug in the top limit of integration first. Uh, when I take the derivative of my antiderivative, that's unknown. Uh, that's going to be 1 plus sine squared of pi minus x over 1 plus cosine squared of pi minus x times the derivative of pi minus x, which is negative 1. And then minus, uh, this is just a number, so ultimately it's going to come out to be 0. 1 plus sine squared of 0. 1 plus cosine squared of 0. And then times the derivative, excuse me, pi. pi, And then times the derivative of pi, which is 0. And this is just going to be negative 1 plus sine squared pi minus x. 1 plus cosine squared I minus x. Uh, so there you have it. That's uh, an introduction to what the fundamental theorem of calculus is and how it's used.